Good evening. Welcome to the June 17th regular meeting of the Village Board of Trustees, this week being a um, special location, uh, last minute change. I hope that uh, if you were looking for us at the courthouse that you found the signs in time to be able to join us here at Village Hall, 16 Croton Avenue. This meeting is now called to order. We'll begin with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Trustee Cazada. Present. Trustee Codman. Present. Trustee Herrera. Present. Trustee Dorio. Present. And Mayor Garrity. Present. Uh, we have this evening a continuation of a public hearing in the matter of local law number two, 2015, which is the Spring Street two-way. Is uh, Corporation Council, would you like to make a comment? Sure, I can summarize it. Um, this would change uh, the traffic patterns along Spring Street uh, to actually put into effect uh, the pilot program which uh, the village has been running for the past several months. It changes uh, the one-way portion to two-way. It, uh, it also makes permanent the changes in parking to permit um, the easy uh, passing of cars and vehicles along the street, and it also establishes a loading zone which is off of Spring Street. The final thing it does is it lowers the speed limit permanently from 30 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. And this is the third adjourned public hearing on this matter. Is there anyone who's come to address the board on this issue? Yes. Join us at the mic, podium. please. And would you give us your name and your residential address? Uh, my name is Robert Volkhausen. I've addressed the board once before, and I'm really very much against this law. Uh, one reason being, I'm, I live at 15 Maple Place, where there are all seniors. A lot of them are on uh, are on uh, have wheelchairs or uh, other other. Um, they're, they're disabled in one way or another, and for one thing, I think there should be a sign there, signs there about uh, senior citizens in the area. Hmm. That's one thing I think very strongly. Number two, I think the 20, whatever it is, 20 mile an hour, someone told me that it was just a suggested uh, speed limit. Nothing definite one way or the other. But I mean, when you're crossing that road and you're doing 60 miles an hour, you, 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 you better get out of the way. And uh, the, the, the cars just come there very, very fast. And I think there should be some uh, regulation by the police as to the speed limit. One other thing, I think there should be uh, at St. Paul's Cafe, between St. Paul's Cafe and the bus stop, which is used by people, uh, all kinds of people, older people, uh, baby car we have a lot of baby carriages in this. We have a very large Latino population with a lot of a lot of babe, a lot of young people, and other other uh, races too. And uh, I think there should be a um, uh, there sh there should be a um, what do you call it a a crossing there, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely, because if the people are coming down about sixty miles an hour, you know, and then you you get these disabled people with or or, or with baby carriages, it just goes much too fast, and you need something to stop these people in the in uh, from 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 that and letting people cross because that bus stop, as you know, is one of the busiest bus stops in Westchester County. I take it all the time, and the the the, the, the buses run very. I just took it today. Went to uh, went to Harrison, over a two hour trip, and I'm telling you, they they do a great job, and. Uh, um, I I think I think also I know this is a, this is a, a number of things, but I think they're very important. I think at the present time you should eliminate parking in front of St. Paul's and in front of the barber shop and in front of the uh, Hudson Pharmacy, because when you cross there and you go you go between the cars, you know, to get across, the cars are coming so fast. And and it, it makes the the, the the driving very 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 uh, limited, and the uh, actually the the um, lanes of traffic 
I don't think, I don't, I'm not a professional, but it seems to me that they are not even legal. Uh, the, 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 way the, uh, the way the alignment is right now at that particular spot, they should do there what they did in front of the uh, Chase uh, Bank, which was a very good thing. They should do that also. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's most of the things that I can cover, and I, but I know you'll do the right thing. Thank you. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who's come to address the board? Do we want a motion to adjourn or to close this public hearing? Uh, I would move to adjourn. So moved. Okay, to we'll adjourn to a date certain. To would be July 1st. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to adjourn to July 1st? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're supposed to say uh, on the motion because I want to say something about this. Oh, on the board? Um, yeah. Would you like to so comment? Uh, retroactively. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to put this out of work session before we vote on it so that we can look at all of the things that that people have said and, want to, and, and the changes that people have suggested so that we can come up with uh, something that addresses as much of it as we can. Great. To provide some guidance for the engineering. Indeed. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and just to add, um, all the comments, whether on social media, email, phone, et cetera, have been submitted to our clerk and um, our corporation council and are on the record. So. Would, would you like my list of things? I, yes, I we would. I have written down here. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Bob. Yes, we would. We'll be able to read. Don't worry. Thank you very much. And um, Thanks, I, will, I will speak to one comment that was raised in the uh, public hearing, which is about the speed limit. I believe that the speed limit currently is 30, the standard, and that the 20 mile an hour speed limit that is on the yellow signs is a recommended speed to encourage people to slow down, but that the, the law that we're considering now would bring the speed legally down to 25 miles per hour in that area. No, right now, this, right now that 20 miles per hour sign, that's, that's not a standard speed limit sign, and, and if, if we need further legal clarification, Corporation Council has spoken to this before, but it's a recommended speed to, to encourage people to slow down in that area, but we will be changing the law with this if this passes, to officially be 20, 25 miles an hour so that anybody who does over 25 miles an hour could be ticketed for driving mm -hmm. too fast in that area. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Um, I also just wanted to reassure the board that crosswalks aren't legislated, they're designed. So there would be no um, verbiage in the law requiring the crosswalk, but the design is certainly going to address the concerns on the crosswalks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's interesting. Okay, we have a second public hearing this evening in the matter of Introductory Local Law Number 5, 2015, entitled Revision to Chapter 250, Vehicle and Traffic. Corporation Council. Yes. Um, introductory Local Law Number 5 uh, addressed some citizens' concerns in that they were not able to receive on-street parking waivers due to the fact that they were driving sport utility vehicles that exceeded the maximum vehicle weight that's listed in the code. So this is a clarification. It's uh, not a controversial clarification. It simply recognizes in the code that passenger sport utility vehicles may exceed that 5,000 gross vehicle weight in order to receive a permit um, a waiver for on-street parking. Is there anyone who's come to address the board on this issue? Not I'd seeing like to it. make a motion that we end the uh, public hearing on, on this. You'd like to close this public hearing? Is I'd that close the public hearing. Okay. Do I have a second to that? Second. Okay. On the board? Yeah, I would just like to say mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, uh, obviously the, the way the law was written, I, I don't know how long, how long is it, does anybody know how long it's been on the books? <laughs> At 5,000 pounds for a, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so obviously the, uh, the weight of, of, um, you know, these vehicles have gotten much heavier. Um, at the end of the day, what we don't want is we don't want people's commercial vehicles parked on street. And uh, I think what we're trying to do here is allow people to have their personal vehicles that are in, are in excess of that weight still have the ability to park on the street, but we also don't want the commercial vehicles. So uh, this law will, uh, will obviously address that. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 So. Okay. We will move on to mayor's and trustees announcements. All right. Um, I just want to say um, 
if you're joining us now, it's because you're watching us uh, on at a later date, not live, because we have moved venues. Um, it was just a scheduling mishap. Um, we would normally be have our regular meetings at the uh, the courthouse, um, uh, but this week we are at uh, Village Hall, which we don't have an easy live feed from, and. Um, we have a lot of exciting things. I will say thank you to everyone. The Chamber of Commerce led the way for last week's uh, Village Fair, which is, I think, an incredible success. I know I enjoyed a, a very uh, exciting day with uh, thousands of folks. It was it was a really, really uh, terrific event. So um, thank you to our friends over at the Chamber and everybody who participated as a, an attendee. And as a, there are so many, what, 200 booths mm -hmm. there for a lot of community organizations. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, and beautiful weather. So can't. Can't plan for that, but that was perfect. Uh, I will invite everybody to the next month's offering from the Austin Documentary and Discussion Series. It is, um, as always, it's free. It's at the Austin Public Library. The program begins at 6.30 in the evening at the Bedars Theater. This one will be July 16th, and it's called Alive Inside. Um, it's a film that was brought to our attention by uh, Bethel Nursing Home. They are one of the screening sponsors. Phelps Memorial Hospital is the other <laughs> screening sponsor. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't think any of us are... In, in, in some way not touched by um, uh, family or member or friend who has experienced Alzheimer. This is a film about how um, music has been found to um, connect with people with Alzheimer's in a way that, um, that helps them connect with other people that they have not otherwise been able to. So the movie will begin at 6.30 and then the panel discussion um, will have uh, really interesting panelists from both a clinical and neurological perspective as well as from a family support perspective and um, music therapy. So uh, I hope you will join us on Thursday, July 16th at the Ossining Public Library. And again, um, if you're interested in finding out more details, it's ossiningdocumentaries.org. And I know my colleagues have some other exciting programs to share. Yes, um, to echo off of what Mayor Garrity said, um, special thanks to the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce along with all our departments, specifically DPW, mm -hmm. REC, our village manager's office and this board. Um, the 35th annual Austin Village Fair was the biggest yet with over 200 vendors, four stages, and it was a great day minus the rain clouds at 930 that gave everyone a scare. So thank you so much. And um, all the minor changes and, um, and noticeable enhancements that you've seen throughout the village are due to the efforts of this board, our village manager's office, and also with the help and leadership of Chris Sawai, our superintendent of Parks and Recreation, and Paul Frioli, um, our village engineer. So thank you so much for that. And um, yeah, you'll be seeing more hopefully very soon in the efforts to continue to be, um, beautify our downtown. Congratulations to the class of 2015 of Austin High School, who will be graduating at Pace University this Saturday and to the 8th grade AMD class who will be moving up to the high school this Saturday as well. And my last thing that I don't see on here, oh, here we go. The St. Anne's Parish Festival is back. It's going to be held beginning next Tuesday, June 23rd, and it'll go straight until Sunday, May 28th from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, just a reminder to all residents um, um, to pay attention where you park. Don't park in front of any... Um, fire hydrants, driveways, and be courteous with all the neighbors, and um, have a great time at, at, at the festival, either through the great international foods, rides, games, casino, flea market, the, you know, activities that are endless, so it's a great time for all. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to remind everybody about the Portuguese festival this Saturday uh, in the uh, middle of the village. It uh, starts at 11, ends at 10 at night. Uh, there will be a 2 p.m. flag raising. It's uh, food and dance and lots of uh, Portuguese uh, culture. Um, it'll be a, it's usually a great day. Hopefully the weather will hold up. So come and enjoy it. And uh, I just want to echo what was said before about uh, this past Saturday. I think um, uh, Omar forgot uh, to, to thank our police department. Uh, oh, they did a great job as well. It was uh, if you guys went next to Chase Bank, it was something called Dunk the Cop, I believe it was called. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So I know a lot of people got uh, some, some good laughs, and, and the police department was, was, was a great part of this. So I want to thank them as well. So thank you. Thank you. I actually forgot all emergency responders. So thank you to OVAC, Austin Police, Correct. and Austin Fire Department. Yes, it was 
a really terrific day and a big collaborative effort to make it such a success. Yeah. Well, as you know, it's getting to be summer here on the Hudson, and uh, recreational boating is the fastest growing recreational sport in the country, uh, and particularly here on the Hudson River. So I want to remind everybody, when you go out on the water, please wear your life jacket and don't drink and boat. Um, I assure you that if you drink, the cops will be providing the chaser and they treat it just like driving under the influence. You'll lose your driver's license. So uh, take this seriously. Wear your life jacket. Don't drink and boat. And if you haven't taken a boating safety course, please do. Thank you. We'll move on to administrative reports, and we'll begin with Village Manager Abraham Zambrano. Thank you. Um, uh, today marks the 22nd day as Village Manager uh, yeah. here in here in Austin. Um, I, can, tell, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can honestly say that I am having a great time. I think I am taking the time to meet with all the department heads, and we have discussed uh, the individual goals as as well as my expectations of, of them as we move forward. Uh, we have established clear channels of, of communications, and it will continue to do so over the next several weeks and months to, uh, to come. Um, I have also engaged some of the local uh, stakeholders in the community, including the Chamber of Commerce and local churches. Uh, so I think that's going to be some, something that uh, part of my plan is to be able to work with them and make Asuning uh, a better place uh, to live um, and visit. I'm also happy to report that the village has launched its official Facebook page. Uh, the, we, you can find those on the web. At the, the name of, is the Village of Austin, New York. Uh, we are going to be posting information about the village, any news uh, at the very beginning, and then we will expand on the uses as, 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 as time comes. Um, I would also like to report that uh, we have there's two electric car chargers have been installed at the operation center in partnership with the town of Ossining, and the f we will finalize the setup for usage in the next uh, few days. Um, that's all I have for this evening. Thank so, you. thank you. Thank you. Move on to Corporation Council, Laura Lee Dixon. I can speak to a, uh, a number of your resolutions for this evening. Um, I thank you for taking up the issue last week in your work session at the library um, and agreeing to put on uh, this evening's resolution calling for a public hearing in introductory local law number six. This is the adoption uh, to establish a community choice aggregation program. Um, this is a uh, hearing is necessary prerequisite to actually adding a chapter to the code whereby the village would participate collaboratively in uh, going to seek proposals in order to get the best possible pricing on energy choices, electric and gas. It, um, it's a, a program that you're participating in with uh, Sustainable Westchester. So this is the first step. Um, they're on a pretty tight time frame, so they asked us to get it on, and I appreciate your efforts last week to get, get this on the agenda this week. Um, item D is, um, if you so choose, uh, you can uh, proceed to the adoption of local law number five this evening. And since it's hopscotching over three others, it will be adopted as local law number two. So it's introductory local law number five, which will become local law number two on your officially on your books. Um, this is the one you just uh, held your public hearing on, which recognizes that sport passenger sport utility vehicles do exceed 5,000 pounds. Um, and you can choose to deliberate um, during the discussion part of that resolution this evening. Um, item E is the resolution you talked about also at work session last week, and it, it talks about the support um, for raising the minimum wage uh, for your uh, fast food workers in New York. So this is supportive of the governor's program and planning. So hopefully you can proceed to, to, um, to, to discuss that um, in support of the governor's uh, good efforts in this. So those are the items that are on tonight. And just a reminder, with the closing of school, there are a lot more children on the road. So to be mindful of uh, the posted speed limit uh, on all the streets. And also, those yellow cautionary signs are there for a reason. And it means that you really should be paying close attention. There are a lot of children out and um, out and about. And uh, I walk the dog each morning. And, and I'm always amazed at uh, 
the speed with which uh, cars are zipping through neighborhoods at that hour of the morning. So mm. please be mindful. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to Police Chief Joseph Burton. Yes, good evening. Uh, monthly stats for May 2015, blotters entry recorded 3,244, vehicle traffic summons issued 389, parking summonses 1,410, Part 1 crimes uniform crime reports were 21, arrests for the month were 86, 52 penal law arrests, 9 village ordinances, 24 vehicle and traffic. Um, the next part of the report is I got good news and I got bad news. I, it all depends which way you want to take it. We had an underage compliance check for sale of alcoholic beverages. We checked 19 establishments, 13 passed, 6 failed. Good news, bad news. And 6 were closed. We checked everyone that was. So the failures were Bell Getty at Bell Avenue, Southside Market on Spring Street, CVS in the Arcadian, Las Americas in, on Yale Avenue, Mana Grocery on Spring Street, and La Cucharhara Deli on Spring Street. That's it. They were all issued summonses returnable to court. Thank you. Thank you. We have Second Assistant Fire Chief Manning De Cruz. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, the month of May, we responded to 47 uh, calls with no major incidents to report. Uh, year to date, we have responded to 308 calls for service. Uh, the new chief car has been delivered. It's in the village. Thank you very much. Uh, just a reminder, we have a couple of events coming up. The annual department inspection is going to be Saturday, June 27th, 6 p.m. on Westerly Road. And the uh, annual department parade is Friday, August 7th, starting at 7 p.m. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to village engineer Paul Frioli. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Good evening. We'll start out with some personnel items. We have our part timers out and about, and uh, that's working very well this year, so thank you for funding that. And this year, we're actually doing something a little expanded on the part timer theme, and we're having two interns that are working at the filter plant four days a week and with our IT director Craig Cooper one day a week. They're both engineering students, um, coincidentally at Villanova, but they are local. <laughs> and um, that's working out quite well and the feedback so far is very positive. So I think that that's a, that, that's a nice thing to supplement the other um, part-time laborers that we have working for the Department of Public Works this summer. Uh, the, uh, the regular crews are out there. They're just more or less went through the entire village now with their, their pothole and patch repair from the winter damage. Um, they're doing some line striping now, which I don't know if you've noticed. A lot of the uh, crosswalks are getting done, and the double yellow lines have been repainted, and then we'll follow with parking lines and parking lot lines after they finish that. In fact, the part-timers are helping them with a lot of that effort, too. As part of the village's village-wide MS4 program that's administered in the field by the Department of Public Works and documented by the Planning Department. We rented the back hall once again this year, and we're going to rent it for about a month and a half, and we're out there cleaning. Probably we'll get to over 500 catch basins. Um, we pick up on not every, we do that every year, so we, we get a few more every year mm -hmm. as, as the years go by, because um, once the program started, we don't really have the amount of material that was in there originally when we started doing it. So that's good for our storm program. And um, everything, every little bit helps, it's particularly in older villages like this with um, uh, flood control. When you have more capacity in the pipes and less material and debris, it's not only a water quality issue, because that eventually all discharges to the Hudson River estuary, it's also a quantity issue where you're able to hold more in the pipe and flow through and contain and, one, and get it off the street faster and, and issues like that. So that, that's all good stuff. Um, uh, with regard to the public hearing we heard earlier, the consultant Porsche facet of that project has started. The surveyors were actually out there today, I believe, to do a lot of the baseline work to get underway, which is one of the first three phases that we told them to go ahead and proceed with on their uh, contract with Mazer Consulting. So um, I'm sure probably within a month or so, um, I'll ask to get on a work session agenda to start 
discussing some conceptual stuff. So um, by default, Trustee Deray, we're going to be on a work session anyway with regards to incorporating all those comments into a lot of that conceptual work that's being done now. The, we, re, we have remobilized in, in the Kilbrook. The design's done, and we're going to start doing that switch back. I actually um, walked the path today with the Superintendent of Recreation, discussed some ideas um, and, and, and how we're going to implement the path into his facility there. So that was, uh, that's really our next phase, and that will take place over the next few months, and we're still looking to be completed by the end of the summer beginning of the fall, right around September 1st, substantially complete. Um, along with the town, we've executed via the annual bid process a couple of POs, and we're going to do some concurrent paving with our annual bid paver within the village. So right now, the village has executed a PO to pave Pine Avenue from the Argantic down to possibly Dale, depending on some potential drainage work we might do down there, but at least as far as, um, help me out, Sherwood, I think, or? Far Ferris, as, Ferris Place. Ferris Place, yeah, yeah. thank you. And then the, um, uh, the um, Pine Brook cul-de-sac off of Pine, and we're also going to do the section of Iroquois that's um, in pretty bad shape between Croton and Picantico. Uh, we're also going to draw from our trips, our chips money and about $22,000 worth of pending assessments to do some concrete work on some sidewalks throughout the villages. Some of them were solicited assessments, some of them were mandated assessments issued by our department. And we'll do the concrete work associated with that. It's probably about $75,000 worth of concrete work. We're going to pull about 22000 from uh, assessment and approximately the balance from our chips funds. Another thing we're doing in conjunction with the town is we're going to do that concurrent LED replacement program. The village has an executed contract very recently. There'll be a PO generated soon, so thank you for that. Um, and, and that project, if you remember, is being funded via the, the payback, so that's all coordinated to the finance department. The town is doing the finance option, but they expect to have a contract executed fairly soon, so that's going to be a concurrent effort that we're going to be doing through the balance of this year. Administratively, in the office, I think Andy might talk about a little more detail, but um, spearheaded by David Stone in our office, we've been spending the last few weeks updating our annual dam safety certification, which is a necessity regardless of the condition of the dam, either even if it's brand new. So we're doing that and submitted that to the DEC. And also in the office administratively, we updated our emergency action plan associated with that dam, which was actually the, one of the topics discussed in OEM earlier this evening, but that was also submitted this week. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Thank you Paul. Thanks. Superintendent of uh, Water and Sewers, Andrew Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Board. The rain has helped us. Good. The Indian Brook Reservoir is presently at 94%. Last month we were at 96, so for this time of year that's pretty good. Currently we're purchasing 65% of our water from New York City. Last month we purchased 85%, so we're in uh, pretty decent shape for still being down like two inches of rain up to this point of the year. The cement water relining project, the contract's been awarded to Fletcher Kramer Brothers. We're awaiting the paperwork and insurance bonds from them. Once we gather everything, we'll send it to Corporation Council for her review and then we could uh, follow through. This morning we had uh, New York City DEP on site at our old Croton Aqueduct, which is like three and a half miles north of the filter plant. Uh, they were there to change out the meter, which uh, allows about eight million gallons a day to the filter plant. That's the flow rate it'll take at one time. Um, in the past, we've owned the meter and we've been responsible for testing the meter every year. Now New York City's taken over that program. It's their meter and they'll provide us monthly um, flow readings and, and we'll double check their readings too. So it was a pretty big deal. We had to fill the aqueduct last night and um, we ran off the aqueduct with what was in there and uh, it didn't affect the plan at all. They originally anticipated the project to take eight hours. They did it in like three hours. So it's all set to go. The generator installation at the Indian Brook Water Treatment Plant is 90% complete. The contractor is waiting on Con Ed to deliver the main transformer to the facility so the final work can be completed. Con Ed was expected to be on site this week. I'm going to talk to the village manager to see if uh, 
we can make some phone calls to get the transformer a little bit faster. The variable frequency drive for the Havel Street pump station has arrived on site two weeks ago. Our contractor is in the middle of the install as we speak. This enhancement will greatly reduce the electrical demand charge along with reducing water hammers that cause water breaks in our distribution system. That huge break that we had on um, by, the, by the hot dog stand on 134, that was due to that station that uh, it caused a major water hammer. So we're doing everything in our power to try and avoid that. It's not 100%, but it's kind of an insurance policy. Thanks. Andy, Thank uh, a water hammer, can you? Yeah, basically, <laughs> um, you can, uh, an analogy would be you can get from point A to point B at 100 miles an hour fast, or you can get to that same place at 50 miles an hour. We have the ability to control the speed of the pumps using this variable fr frequency control. Right. Fill the tanks at a slower speed, and you won't have the hydraulic shock of slamming the pumps on and slamming them off. Got it. And the big money savings are that if you can save that KW demand charge, every KW is $20. So you can save you know, 50000 a year at a, at a pump station just on the demand charge. Uh -huh. That station will probably be ten to fifteen thousand, but at the filter plant, it's saved like seventy-five thousand a year. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Spill money. Treasurer Thomas Moore. Good evening, Mayor, Good members evening. of the Board of Trustees. Good evening. The uh, twenty fourteen audited financial statements were received a few weeks ago, and is scheduled to be reviewed with the Village Board at next week's work session. Um, and the audit report will also be posted on the village's website uh, early next week. Uh, with regards to property taxes, with the mid-year point nearly upon us, I have this reminder for the uh, payment and collection of village property taxes. The second installment of the 2015 village property taxes is due uh, next month by July 31st without penalty. The tax payments may be made in person at the municipal building, uh, second floor, Monday through Friday, 9 to 4.30, by mail or via the village's website uh, during the month of July. Taxpayers are encouraged to call us if they have any questions at 941-2581. The village sent out reminder notices last week uh, for July's uh, tax payments and highlighted whether taxpayers have any prior year unpaid taxes uh, since interest rates changes monthly and with tax liens having to be paid in reverse chronological order. Uh, taxpayers are asked to call us to verify the amounts due. The redemption date for the 2013 tax liens, which were 2012 property taxes, uh, was June 1st, 2015, which now allows for village foreclosure and will require board approval to redeem tax liens. There are six parcels remaining, three of which are on the town's foreclosure list, uh, with one of the uh, parcel representatives talking to us um, about uh, possible redemption. One parcel has prior village liens, and the owner of two parcels are working towards uh, asking the village uh, for permission to redeem the tax liens. Um, and last month, the uh, Village Corporation Council filed paperwork with the county to start the two-year redemption process on 2015 uh, tax liens, which were 2014 property taxes. Uh, with regards to major revenues, we received our first half mortgage tax distribution payment from the county. Uh, this month, um, it was a disappointing uh, $77,900 approximately, which is about 18% less than the amount received um, a year ago, which was about $95,500, and unfortunately cast doubts on our ability to achieve our revenues, um, budgeted revenues of $200,000 uh, for the 2015 year. Uh, but the interesting thing was that the county overall showed a 7% increase on mortgage tax revenue. So the fact that, um, you know, the tax revenue goes back to the home county that has the uh, mortgage tax filings, you know, shows that, um, you know, the, the, the filings just weren't there for the um, Austining area. Sorry. It's not your fault, Tom. <laughs> Nothing we can do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, w um, did you say you're going to be on the work session so we can discuss we're, this in um, more detail? Th that was actually um, next item after the, the, the next was the fact that we're working on a near six month review. It's actually going to be about five months at next week's uh, work session. We're going to talk about the um, village's revenues and expenditures year to date. Okay, so we'll be yes. able to explore those disturbing numbers Absolutely. more then yes. and, and yes. better understand them. Uh, the but on session. a positive note, 
uh, village water and sewer uh, revenues year to date um, are about 16 to 17 percent higher than they were at this time of year um, a year ago. Yeah. And uh, finally, um, uh, another uh, piece of good news that I'll end with, um, as I had reported um, late last month when it actually happened, uh, the village and the town has filed its combined government efficiency plan with New York State, which is the next step towards uh, resident taxpayers receiving a tax freeze credit or refund check from New York State. Actual taxpayer savings for the three-year period 2017 to 2019 were tallied at nearly $3.95 million, uh, while the target goal set for us was only $938,000 in savings. So wow. uh, we really great. were able to, just with a few items, really establish a uh, large amount of savings Excellent. to demonstrate to the state that uh, the, we, you know, we really are working to save money. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So do we get a break of the 2% tax cut? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. <laughs> that would be the next step is to uh, not um, override the uh, Correct. tax cap. Right. Yes. Well, this will have been all In for not. Correct. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Superintendent of Parks and Recreation, Christopher Soy. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Good evening. Uh, as we all know, summer is almost here, officially arriving this Sunday, which is also Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to those on the, the board in attendance and out in the community. Happy Father's Day. Uh, with, day with summer around the corner, day camp is, uh, must be day camp is uh, about to begin. Our camp registration has been ongoing. However, due to the need to make some final decisions on staffing levels and the need to maintain uh, approved camper to staff ratios, we have recently reached our enrollment limits on a couple of our camps. Uh, we have established some wait lists for these camps and will determine if additional campers can be enrolled on a case-by-case -case basis. If anyone is still interested in enrolling, the, enrolling their child in our camp program uh, and want to know the registration status of a particular camp, please call us at the Recreation Department <coughs> at 941-3189. Uh, with our day camp program ending on Friday, August 7th, we will be offering additional programs off, off, over the course of the remaining three weeks in August. We have a uh, summer fun week, which is a series of day trips that will run from August 10th through August 13th. We have a mad science uh, Eureka invention camp from August 20, sorry, August 17th to August 21st, and a U.S. Sports Institute uh, multi-sports camp running from August 24th to August 28th. Okay. Um, so if anyone wants information on that, they can... Uh, Go to the uh, community center, uh, call us, or visit our webpage. Uh, a reminder that the pool will be going to on a summer schedule starting on Monday, June 29th. Due to camp use during the day, our open swim hours will be 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays, and 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, please make sure to everyone needs an updated rec ID card and be uh, uh, currently registered for the open swim. We also will be offering a six-week learn to swim session for all levels starting on Saturday, July 11th. Registration is currently open for the swim lessons. Uh, for our parks report, our parks crew installed the hanging flower baskets throughout downtown and along Croton Avenue and worked on a number of beautification projects within the downtown area. They also continued seasonal cleanup and scheduled maintenance and upkeep of parklands, village parcels, miscellaneous areas, and athletic fields. Uh, an initial parks assessment was done by myself and park foreman uh, Larry Abreu. Uh, this assessment will be part of a more comprehensive parks, respo parks report scheduled to be completed by early August. Uh, on the special events side, uh, <clears throat> our department continues to work collaboratively with the police, fire, ambulance, DPW, and both town and village leadership on the planning of the fireworks celebration on Thursday, July 2nd, uh, with a rain date of Thursday, July 9th. <clears throat> And then the beginning of the Friday night summer concert series at Waterfront Park will begin on Friday, July 10th with the band Powderfinger. Uh, that is, those are concerts begin at 7 p.m. We have a full uh, concert lineup that is now available uh, and will be distributed and uh, posted on our webpage, Facebook, and, and the like. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a lot. Yes. Move on um, to Village Planner Valerie Minostra. I would I would just mention. Did you mention the fireworks on July second? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I got distracted. Yeah. All right. Very exciting. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this uh, report highlights the work 
um, dealing with the planning department. Um, first of all, I wanted to discuss some of the larger development projects and uh, where we are in their approval updates. Um, Victoria Home, the applicant is proposing to can reconstruct their uh, facilities and create a facility for 120 beds. Um, we are in the final environmental impact statement process and we're still waiting the draft for, of the FEIS from the applicant. Uh, 173 North Highland Avenue, the applicant is proposing to alter an existing 43,000 square foot uh, existing retail space, add two additional stories for an additional 44,000 square feet of self-storage facility, and construct a new gas station with 3,000 square foot snack shop. We're waiting for legal agreements to be created between this property owner and the neighboring property owner regarding access easements for Albine Street, and we're also waiting for required documents to begin the technical review, seeker review, and county referral process for this project. Um, also, I continue to work and meet and conduct necessary research with our prospective developers or property owners looking to develop in the village of Austin, including the old DPW site and uh, a number of others. Um, Planning Board and Board of Architectural Review have reviewed 19 applications so far this year. The Zoning Board of Appeals has reviewed 16 new applications so far. The Historic Preservation Commission has worked on six new applications and is continuing its work on the historic signage walking tour. We're finalizing the contract with Museum in the Streets. I'm still working on getting two more license agreements from property owners. I also need to package all the documents to send to the Museum in the Streets. And after that, Museum in the Streets will create mock-ups and translations of all the signs. And finally, we'll go into production, and the Department of Public Works will work with the Historic Preservation Commission on the installation of the signs. Um, the HPC is also commencing work on additional buildings to locally landmarks. So those presented to you um, in a probably in a few months. Uh, the Environmental Advisory Council reviewed one draft environmental impact statement so far this year, and they worked on a joint EAC booth for the Village Fair with Town EAC. The department is also working on submitting three grants for the consolidated funding applications. The grants will include submissions for changes to Route 9, uh, Malcolm Street sewer lining, and Broadway bridge repairs. I'll also be coming to a village board, uh, return to the village board in an upcoming work session in July to discuss the upstate mobilization initiative and possible projects to submit for funding under that program. Um, we might be able to get, we might be able to submit funding for the uh, water filtration plant and its expansion. So again, I will uh, bring that to the board and explain a little bit more about that new initiative. Um, we're also working on creating a complete streets walking order at Tri-State Transportation Campaign and information on dates and routes will be forthcoming. Um, the department is also working on revising the municipal train station um, and par excuse me, municipal parking and train station parking with the legal department, police department, and engineering department. Uh, the draft local law is being reviewed internally amongst a number of department heads and a work session presentation on the proposed changes in draft local law will be coming soon. And this will include, you know, trying to take into consideration of all the development that's taking place in the downtown to accompany the new residential and also some of the issues that have been coming up with different businesses and their concerns with making sure that their constituents have the available parking. So we're looking at it holistically and then also making, um, creating the local law so that it's actually easier to um, amend as opposed to the current local law. Um, also, John Nolan from Peace University will be attending the June 24th uh, work session to discuss the economic development policy that Peace is working on with a number of different municipalities as part of the Mayor's Roundtable. I will not be at that work session, but I am working on a comparison of economic development plans, policies, laws, and programs that we have implemented in the village and compare them to the strategies outlined by Peace. Um, I will attend a future work session to discuss the results of the comparison. I um, also wanted to just update the board on our affordable housing program. We have 26 units online, 24 units uh, are currently occupied, um, 22 more units are under construction, and we continue our yearly recertifications and finding new tenants in the department becomes available. Westchester County is almost finished with their work on the countywide hazard mitigation plan. This work, uh, the work for this plan involves village input on natural hazards and input from numerous village departments. The village will need to adopt the plan in order to be able to receive uh, funding under the hazard mitigation grant program. This grant program is actually the program that we submitted for for the dam um, restoration work and rehabilitation. So. Ultimately, the village will need to adopt this um, component of the countywide hazard mitigation plan. This um, 
Again, the village uh, village's component of the plan will be brought to a work session in July for the board to review and to update you on the plan. And then finally, a uh, presentation was made at the last village board work session on the web-based community uh, input results for the market square and post office lots, and the planning department is ready to assist the village board when the board decides to start working on the RFP for the site. Thank Great. you. Uh, sorry, Thank Valerie. You. Yes. Sorry. Um, in, in regards to the applications that are in front of either the planning board, yes. zoning board, or the HPC, yes. um, and, and I know because I'm actually just checking this online, uh, we do have another way to, and, and how often do you update the drawings that you have in the 360 e-code? Yeah, so we put all the current applications bef on the 360 code, so if you go to the 360 code and you click on zoning board, they're all the zoning board applications pending for the current zoning board agenda. Okay. Now, and, and something I forgot, uh, and just to the public in general, if, if you're not able to attend and you want to find out what project and what's the process of the proposals that are going on in, in front of the various boards, you can actually go into our website. There's a section in there that says uh, the village code, and then it's, there's a, it takes you to a 360, am I correct, yes. so far? And then it should be a link where it says agendas, and then agendas portion, uh, you, you'll be able to see um, all the applications that actually Valerie just mentioned, um, so which is great uh, so far. I, I, you know, I hope a lot of us, it, and I do actually go through that and, and see the different applications and what is going on in, in our boards as well, and what kind of projects are those. Besides that, I know you also have uh, two TV monitors that are actually presented in there. That's and correct. Okay. And we, uh, we display all the uh, projects and okay. all the electronic files. The, uh, you can also access the um, 360 if you go into the planning department and it says current. So, oh, you project. do have a link in there? Yeah, okay, the great. Thank you. Well. And then um, also there are a couple applications that we don't have on 360 and some of them are more of when you deal with interpretations and stuff and they have an extensive like, legal documents associated with them. But those are just few and far between, but the most part, the uh, applications okay. are there. All right. Well, okay. thank you. Thank you. Director of Personnel, Linda McMahon. Yay. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Board of Trustees. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, well, personnel is very busy this time of year, helping our recreation department, getting its staffing in place for all of the camps and the other summer seasonal programs. And with respect to training, uh, the village manager uh, stated to me that he was interested in having some additional training for our administrative staff with respect to customer service. So next week, we are going to be conducting two sessions, uh, strictly for the administrative staff uh, initially, and it's gonna be through Westchester County with Pamela Bryce. And she's gonna discuss various ways to make public contact um, a positive experience, both for the employees as well as the public, and also to um, work on communication so that there's possibly uh, a way to problem solve and actually do it in a positive way. So um, we have two half-day sessions, and, um, hope, and we anticipate that it will go very well because this woman does an excellent job. Thank you for incorporating those, those new trainings so quickly into your schedule. I know you already have a lot that you have in the uh, annual schedule, so that was yes. very swift. Very welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Very Thank impressive. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Director of Code Enforcement, Al Soraka. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Good evening. I have this month's uh, May's uh, month activity report from the building department. We have uh, 58 new complaints. This month, uh, total complaints here to date, we had 304. Just to break down the complaints, out of the 58, we had eight constructing with a, with a, without a building permit, one fire damage, seven garbage, two heat, uh, one illegal discharge, four overcrowding living spaces, 13 property maintenance issues, two sewage, five site plan violations, one swimming pool, and 14 village ordinances. Uh, old complaints closed, we had a total of 24. We have 200 that have been closed up to date. Uh, notice of violations, we've had 26 uh, new ones this month with 107 counts. Uh, year to day we've closed out 125 with 314. Violation breakdowns, 26, construction without a building permit, we've had three. One fire damage, four garbage, two heat, three property maintenance issues, and 13 village ordinances. 
and then getting over to the court appearance tickets, we issued 20 this month uh, with 93 counts totally. Uh, total court appearance tickets, year to date, we've had 55 with 218 counts. Um, out of those, we've had, let's see, court appearance tickets, breakdowns, one fire damage, three garbage, two heat, one property maintenance, and 13 village ordinances that were issued. Uh, court appearance that were closed this month, we've had zero. That were closed, uh, total court appearance tickets closed year to date, we've had five. Court fines assessed this month uh, was zero. Uh, total court fines assessed year to date is $2,300. We've had, uh, well, before I go, if I briefly can expand on our code enforcement process, I'd just like to point out, I mean, you can see the difference in the numbers. Uh, every month I bring out numbers, and that's all they look like. But we deal with the public on these, and we try to basically help them in the best way we can. just want to show the difference in complaint types for this month is 58. The violation breakdown was 26, so you're looking at about half, okay? And then this, this month we've had 20, but usually we've had about 5% of appearance tickets out of the number of complaints that we've received. What that shows is that the building department is able to work well with the community to resolve these issues before they need to go to the next step. As you can see, the breakdown is from 58 complaints all the way down to, in most cases, it's 10 tickets. So a lot of times we're able to resolve issues without going to an appearance ticket, and that's dealing with the community. If they ever have any questions, they can call the building department and discuss with us. And they do not have to leave their information. If they need to ask any questions, they can do it anonymously. They do not need to leave their information, and we'll answer their questions the best we can with the information that we've been given by them over the phone. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, moving on. Building permits, we've had 42 new permits, fee totaling $8,821. Year to date, 120 permits, fee totaling $43,210.50. We've had 26 certificate of occupancies issued, uh, year to date, 111. Affidavit fees, $418. Year to date, $2,189. We've had 15 new plumbing permits, fee totaling $1,460. Year to date, 74 and $5,700. Electrical permits, we've had 26, $2,918. Year to date, 97 with $12,112. We've had three new backflow applications, fee totaling $300. Year to date, 16 with a fee totaling $1,600. Tree permits, we've had five new ones this month with $360. Year to date, permit fees, let's see, excuse me, 17 with fee totaling 1150 We've had one signed permit, $60, uh, year-to-date five, with a fee totaling 300 Pre-date inspections, we've had one for $100. Pre-date-to-date, three, $300. Uh, searches, we've had 17, fee totaling $1,825. Year-to-date, 105 searches, fee totaling $10,915. We've done foils, 22 foils uh, this month, year-to-date 130 foils. Overnight parking inspections, we have 46, year-to-date 447. Uh, Section 8, we've had 14, year-to-date 83. Fire assembly inspections, 33, year-to-date uh, total was 148. Building plumbing inspections this month was 173. Uh, the total up to date is 1,057. Between all our reviews, plan reviews, building, plumbing, electrical, pre-date, and so on, we've had uh, 93 reviews this month, and uh, plan reviews completed year-to-date, 332. And a uh, quick reference to everyone that smoke and carbon alarms are the law. They're retroactive by New York State Property Maintenance Code. If you have any questions on where they should be located in your residence, please call us at the building department, 941-3199. We'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That completes your administrative reports. We'll move on to organizational announcements. Is there anyone here that would like to give an organizational announcement? <coughs> I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, village board resolutions. Is there anyone who would like to comment or on any of the resolutions on this evening's agenda? Not seeing any. Resolved the Board of Trustees of the Village of Boston hereby approves the minutes of the June 3rd 2015 regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 
on the board? Madam Clerk? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Result, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ossing hereby approves the voucher detail report dated June 17, 2015, in the amount of $490,988.47. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board? Madam Clerk? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby calls for a public hearing to take place at the Birdsall Fagan Police Court Facility, 8688 Spring Street, in Ossing on July 1, 2015, at 7.30 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard, to consider the matter of introductory local law number 6, 2015, entitled A Local Law to Establish a Community Choice Aggregation Energy Program in the Village of Austin, a local law adding a new Chapter 10 to the Code of the Village of Austin to establish a program which authorizes the Village to join with other local governments and coordinate efforts through competitive bidding to identify savings <coughs> excuse me, and provide for cost certainty by determining a default supply of electricity and natural gas on behalf of its residents and small commercial customers. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Yes, I'd like to uh, just say um, we're, we're not voting on this tonight, so uh, I'm sure we'll have all have comments before um, we have that. This is just a call for public hearing. And anyone in the public who is interested in learning more about this, we have discussed it at work sessions in the past. Um, in fact, Mike Gordon from Sustainable Westchester has come and met with the board to help us better understand this on numerous occasions, but most recently in one of our April work sessions, yes. I believe it was. Yeah. I have to check the date if you really need to know. Um, but also you can go to uh, sustainablewestchester.org. And they um, over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see uh, it's the Community Choice Aggregation. I think it's an orange box. It says the Community Choice Aggregation Toolkit. Click on that, and there's a bunch more information. So if you're interested in coming to comment at the public hearing next week, you can get a little background information at the sustainablewestchester.org website. Um, if the legal language that's provided isn't isn't insightful enough for you, so <laughs> um, the law is on the website. yes, the law is on the website. Thank you. Uh, on the board, others. All those Madam in Clark. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Whereas the board of trustees of the village of Ossing has been considering the adoption of a proposed local law entitled Vehicles and Traffic Law Revision, which law would amend Chapter 250 of the Code of the Village of Ossing to clarify that the standard gross vehicle weight of sport utility passenger vehicles may exceed 5,000 pounds, and whereas in accordance with New York State law, and after having provided all requisite notice, the Board of Trustees conducted a public hearing on introductory local law number 5, 2015, entitled Vehicle and Traffic Law Revision, on June 17, 2015, at 7.30 p.m. at 16 Croton Avenue, Austin, New York, during which hearing the public had an opportunity to be heard on such proposed local law, and whereas the matter was the topic of further discussion and deliberation at a public meeting subsequent to such hearing on June 17, 2015, following which the Board determined that there was no impediments to proceeding with adoption of the local law as drafted and designated it as Local Law Number 2, 2015. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby adopts introductory local law number five as local law number two, 2015, entitled Vehicle and Traffic Law Re Revision, and directs that said local law be filed and or distributed in accordance with applicable law. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. <laughs> On the board. <laughs> Adam Clerk. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Trustee Cazada. Aye. Trustee Codman. Aye. Trustee Herrera. Aye. Trustee Doral. Aye. And Mayor Garrity. Aye. Thank you. Whereas Governor Andrew Cuomo has impaneled a wage board to investigate and make recommendations on the minimum wage for fast food workers, which can adopt a $15 per hour minimum wage to lift thousands of residents of Westchester County working in the fast food industry out of poverty. And whereas fast food workers are among the lowest paid workers in New York and throughout the nation, and full-time employment in the fast food industry still leaves a family under the federal poverty line, with 
On average, those working in the fast food industry earning $16,920 per year, or $8.75 per hour, given an increasingly rare 40-hour work week. And whereas inflation has increased each year and inequitably has been increasing over the past four years, four decades, excuse me, with the federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour not having been increased since July 24th of 2009. And after decades of stagnating wages in 2013, the governor signed legislation that raised minimum wage from $7.25 to its current level of $8.75 with another incremental increase to $9 that will take effect by the end of 2015. And whereas there are approximately 180,000 fast food workers in New York State and 3.6 million nationally, and fast food workers are disproportionately women, people of color, and families with over a quarter of all fast food workers raising at least one child, 70% over the age of 20, and two-thirds as primary wage earners in their family. And whereas raising wages for fast food workers comes at no cost to taxpayers, but fast food workers are presently twice as likely to be receiving public assistance compared with all working families. And in New York State, 60% of all fast food workers have at least one family member on public assistant, assistance, resulting in those low wages costing taxpayers an estimated $700 million annually in public assistance. And whereas a higher minimum wage of $15 is good for the economy, a $15 minimum wage levels the playing field for businesses to pay higher wages, eliminating the race to the bottom created by major corporations that rely on low wages to maintain profits, and increasingly, commuti increasingly communities are using $15 as the new baseline for service jobs. And whereas even a significant increase in fast food workers' wages to $15 will not significantly impact the cost of fast food, for the commercial viability of the fast food industry, which brought in $551 billion in global revenue in 2014, with the average fast food CEO earning $23.8 million in 2013, up 400 percent from 2000 in real terms, and whereas a $15 an hour minimum wage would create jobs and help stimulate the economy. Studies have shown that low wage earners or workers are more likely than any other income group to spread additional earnings and an increase in consumer spending for local businesses will lead to improved economic growth generated by raising wages and the experience of the 13 states that increased the minimum wage since 2014, including New York bears that out of all but New Jersey having seen <laughs> increased employment rates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village of Ossing supports the New York State Wage Board raising the wage to fast food workers statewide and recommends a wage of $15 an hour. And be it further resolved that the village clerk of the Village of Ossing shall send certified copies of this resolution to New York State Governor, the New York State Wage Board, and to all New York County legislatures for their memorialization. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Oh, yeah. First, I'd like to move to amend this, uh, the last paragraph, that this resolution should also be sent to the members of the Governor's Commission. There are three of them, and then there's a chairman. Uh, the head of the Wage Board is Mario Mussolino. He's the acting head of that. He should get it. Uh, Byron Brown, who's the mayor of Buffalo, is on the commission. He should get it. And he rep he's representing the people. Uh, Mike Fishman, who is the Secretary Treasurer of SEIU, is representing Labor. And there's a fellow who's a CEO of a big corporation who, unfortunately, my battery died well, before I could pull the name off, and I'll give it to you tomorrow. Okay. But I'd like to add those people to the list of folks that get this resolution. Do a, yeah. can you I have no objection. Okay. okay. And further, this is just a start. Fast food workers are not the only people who are suffering uh, with the minimum wage. Um, most retail workers, most people uh, who work as laborers, uh, and so many domestic workers, there are so many people who do not make a living wage, 
have to work two, sometimes three jobs with no benefits and have trouble feeding their families. Um, this is just a beginning. So not only do we have to get this done, we also have to make sure that when they pass a minimum wage increase to $15 an hour for everyone, it needs to be indexed to inflation. Had that been done when the original minimum wage law was passed during the Roosevelt administration, today's minimum wage would be $22 an hour. Well, just to give you a perspective, um, if we do not index it to inflation, in five or six years we're going to be back in the same place having the same problem again. So what I'd like everybody to do is contact their assembly person, their senator, New York State, their congressperson and their, and their senator at the national level and tell them that you, they need to pass a real minimum wage increase with a cost of living increase. It's vital. One in five children in this country go to bed hungry every night in the richest country in the world. It's a disgrace. It needs to be fixed. Well said. Your comments? Yeah, I would just I would just like to say that uh, you know I had brought this up at the at the work session. Um, I uh, I went to a conference uh, a few weeks ago up in Albany, and uh, the Fight for Fifteen is a uh, very powerful movement, and uh, I was very moved by uh, my experiences there. And and this isn't this is a great step if we can get the wage board to make this make this move and give them this raise, um, it really sends a sign to say that, that people need to be, be given a fair wage and they need to be able to live in dignity. And I think that's what this does. And just so everybody understands, this is not a binding resolution for our municipal government or, mm -hmm. or anything else. This is just a statement of support, okay, for the governor's wage board uh, to move forward to give these workers uh, uh, the, the, a proper wage. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that is as amended with the additional yes. people being sent to. Thank you. <coughs> Trustee Jiraiya, if you would be so kind as to email me those. I'll the do that in the morning when I get to my office. Thank you so much. Okay. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the Ossing Fire Chief, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ossing hereby approves the transfer of Washington Sanchez from Hollow Hose Company Number 5 to Ossing Hose Company Number 1. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ossing hereby rem removes Sean Walsh from the active roles of the Ossing Fire Department Independent Hose Company Number 6. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do we have any continuing business of the board? Not to my knowledge. No, we do not. Do we have any new business of the board? I believe we do. We do. Um, I have uh, received word that uh, we have uh, um, obtained the necessary releases and the appraisal reports to settle a claim that was issued with reference to a motor vehicle accident. Since the claim amount exceeds that which is authorized um, independent of a resolution. I would uh, request that we put this on for a resolution this evening to authorize settlement so I can uh, proceed to have the check cut. Whereas Patricia Lawrence claimant having an address in Austin has duly filed a notice of claim with the Village of Austin for a claim for damages resulting from an automobile accident on <coughs> April 25th, 2015 for which the Village is responsible and whereas the Village of Austin has caused an investigation into said claim and it appears that the aforesaid motor vehicle was damaged, but no claims have been filed against the Village of Austin for personal injuries resulting from such accident. And whereas claimant has offered to settle and compromise said claim against the Village of Austin and the Village will duly, has duly audited the aforesaid claim of the claimant and the item of damage set forth therein and has determined that said claim should be allowed to the extent of $8,946.85. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ossing hereby audits and allows the claim of claimant in the amount of $8,946.85 and is further resolved that the Treasurer of the Village of Ossing is hereby authorized and directed to pay 
to the said claimant the aforementioned amount in full settlement of the claim upon delivery to the village of Bosnia of a release to the village for the settlement of such claim. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay, that Ma moves us into visitor recognition. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? Anyone? Oh, come on. No one. <laughs> Then might I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. On the board. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And with that, um, I welcome you to invite you to please join us for next week's work session where we will be right here in Village Hall at the uh, Village Board Meeting Room at 16 Croton Avenue. The meeting begins at 7.30. Um, it is a public meeting. You're always welcome to join us. Um, although it is really these... Uh, board meetings where there's an opportunity. There are opportunities built in for public comment. So I hope you'll join us back at the uh, courthouse again on July 1st for our regular uh, board meeting. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.